Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on NPLS. You can find a complete list of NPLS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we're going to be looking at our last PECE routing protocol, and it's probably the most popular routing protocol used in NPLS VPN, which is BGP. We're going to start off with BGP basic configuration, and we'll look at the two most commonly used implementation models. The first is where you have each of the remote sites having a unique AS number, and the second model where you have each of the sites sharing the same AS number, and we'll see how we can use the AS override features to make that possible, since by default, the BGP does, router doesn't like to see its own AS number as part of the AS path that the route it receives. Okay, then we'll be configuring site of origin to deal with the backdoor link between two sites, and finally we will look at the local precedence and see how that is treated across MPLS and VPN. For a physical lab topology, we have eight routers, R1 through R8, and one switch, switch 1, with the router R2, R3, R4, and R5 connected across a zero point to point link, as well as the R6, R7 also have a directly connected link. Any other connections are done across layer 2 VLANs. And if you've been watching our previous MPLS videos, you see that the topology remains pretty much the same. And depending on what video you've been watching, you might notice that we have additional links right here between switch 1 and R2, as well as R6 and R7 that we just introduced when we started doing PECE routing protocol lab. Okay, so that's for physical topology. Now for the layer 3 topology, we used to have our MPLS core in the middle with R1, R2, and R4 being a PE router and R3, R5 being a PE only router. And we have four sites, site 1, 2, 3, and 4 with site 3 having a switch 1 being a CE device that's due home to R2 and R4. And we also have a backdoor link between site 2 and site 4, which is the link that connects R6 to R7. And we're going to be configuring a GRP for that backdoor link. Okay, but as far as the PEC routing protocol, we'll be looking at BGP, and these are the AS number that we're going to be dealing with. Let's start with our task number one, BGP basic configuration. We need to configure BGP sessions between R6, R7, R8 switch ones, and their corresponding PE routers. I'll show in the diagram and then advertise that loop back 10 through 12. And then on the PE side, router R1, R2, and R4, we need to advertise the route from VRF C1 across MPLS VPN. And then we have to verify connectivity between our from switch 1 to our 6, our 7, our 8 loop back 10 through 12. And then we have to see why we do not have connectivity among our 6, our 7, and our 8. Okay, so let's start our configuration on the CE devices with the first device of our 6. And this is just going to be a regular BGP configuration. So here, let's get on to the router R6. And R6 has the AS number of 65124, so 65124. Okay, no synchronization, no auto summary. And then we do the BGP router ID using its loopback zero. Let's take a look at the interface. Okay, loopback zero. And then we advertise its loopback using a network command, so 6600 mass slash 24. And then 6610 and then 6620. Okay, and then we specify our neighbor, and we're just going to keep it simple and use the IP on the directly connected link. So the neighbor for R6 would be 162.16.16.1, which is the interface IP of R1, and the remote AS of 100. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's see what we have real quick. Okay, there you go, here's our config, so we can just simply copy this. Let's use the notepad, and we're just going to modify the config. Next will be our R7s, and R7 is also in AS65124. Let's loop back, it's going to be 162.16.0.7. The log neighbor changes there by default, and then we need to advertise this loop back 10 through 12. So that would be 7.7. .7. And for our neighbor, this R7 neighbor is R2, and R2 interface that connects to R7 is 27.2. Okay, AS number is the same, 100, so that would be the config for R7. Copy and paste. Next is the router R8, and router R8 is in the same AS, R65124. Loopback is .8 for loopback 0. And then we have the loopback 10 through 12. And the neighbor of R8 is R1. And R1 interface IP facing R8 is 
18 dot. Okay, so copy that and then we'll paste it on R8. Now I'll ask CE device configurations on the switch one and switch one has a do home links to R4 and R2 and it's also sitting in its own AS which is 65010. Okay, and the loopback 0 for switch one is 0 0.10. Now for the other loopback, 10.10. .10. And for the neighbor, the first neighbor is R4, and that would be 104.4. And the second neighbor is 102.2. Okay, so very basic BGP configuration at this point. And copy and paste. Okay, next we need to start configuring our PE routers. And let's do R1. That's our first PE device. Then you have to get into the router BGP 100. And since we're dealing with VRF C1, you have to get under the address family IPv4 VRF C1. And since we're dealing with BGP natively from PECE and then advertising that also across BGP in the MPLS, there's no need to do any redistribution. We just need to configure the neighbor under the VRF or address family for the VRF. And R1 has the neighbor of R6 and R8. So the first neighbor is R6. It will be 16.16.6, remote AS65124. Okay, now for R8, .8 uh, 18.8. So you can see configuration is pretty easy without us having to deal with any kind of redistributions since we only have you know using only a single protocol a routing protocol here now we do show IP BGP VPNV for all you can see all these route has been learned over BGP from R6 and R8 and this is particularly a eBGP and we also have a route for the locally connected subnet from our previous videos Okay, but as far as the leap back from R6 and R8, we are seeing that in our BGP table. And if we do show IP BGP VPN V4 6600, you can see there's not really anything special with the routes to have the route distinguisher in there with the route target. But as far as metric, it stays zero. And here's the local label. Okay, so that's configuration for R1. Next is configuration for R2, router BGP 100, address family IPv4, VRF. C1 and for R2, R2 has a neighbor of R7 and switch 1. Okay, so that would be a neighbor of 162.16.102.10, that is switch 1, remote AS65010, uh, and then the neighbor of 162.16.27.7, and the remote AS65124. Okay, now let's go ahead and complete our last. PE router, which is R4, router BGP 100, C1, and now you need just one command for the neighbor, 104.10, remote AS 65010. Okay, since we already configured the MP BGP in our previous video, but if you're curious, we can take a look at the config. We're using a peer template to complete that and it's currently a full mesh between these three PE routers. That's why we're using a peer template. Here's the neighbor command for R1 and R2 which is this peer and that's tied to the peer session and then here is our address family VPN v4 with the peer being the R1 and R2. Okay so those are already pre-configured from the previous lab we just added on the PECE configuration. Okay, so now to verify our connectivity from switch 1 to R6, R7, and R8. Let's get on to the switch 1 and do show IP route BGP. You can see it has the routes to R6, R7, and R8. And if you're trying to ping 6601, sourcing from loopback 10, you can see that's pingable. You can try 7701, that's also pingable, and we can also try try 8801 and that is pingable okay by this point we do not have any connectivity among R6 R7 and R8 and let's take a look on R6 if we do show IP 
BGP, you can see that all the R6 has a knowledge of is the switch one loopback interface. Okay, and the same thing with R7. It only knows the switch one routes. And the same goes with R8. Okay, and this is because sites, site one, site two, and site four, where three routers are located, they are all sharing the same AS number. And when the routes, it's advertised from one site and being received on the other site by default, the router R7, which is a CE device C, its own AS number as part of the AS path of the route, and it immediately rejects the routes. Okay, so this is true for R6, R7, and R8, since they all have the same AS number, 65124. And that leads us to our next task, task number two, AS overwrite. So now we have to configure R1, R2, and R4 to allow communication between R6, R7, and R8, loop back 10 through 12. Okay, so in order for each of these sites, our site one, two, and four, to be able to receive each other routes, we will need to remove the AS65124 from the routes that's being received by these routers. Okay, and the ways to do that is through a feature called AS override. So what we can configure on R1, R2, and R4, which is PE devices is, we can tell it to replace the AS number that matches uh, the local AS with its own AS numbers. In this case, we can, for example, configure R2 to replace the, any route that has the AS number 65124 and have that replaced with the AS100. And that way, when the R7 sees the route, all it sees is just the AS100, it will happily accept the routes, which you will see in the second here. Okay, so start off our configuration on R1. Do config T with the router BGP100 address family. So again, we're dealing with a VRS specific configuration here, so we need to get under the address family pv4 vrf c1 and the as override is part of a neighbor command so it's a neighbor specific and first we the configuration for r6 your question mark here we have the option for as override and the descriptions to override the matching as number while sending the updates okay so we're gonna enable as override for r6 as well as the r8 before we take a look at the result, let's go around and complete all that. I believe we're already under the address family right here. So all we need is a neighbor command to R7 for R2 and then enable AS override. Okay, there's no need to configure AS override pointing towards switch one because switch one is sitting in a AS number that's unique. Okay, so we wouldn't be having the same issue and we have verified that switch one has connectivity to all of these three sites. Okay, so now that we have enable AS override, let's go ahead and take a look at R6 and see if that's already taken effect. So I'll show IP BGP. All right, it looks like it did. So now I can see that before all R6 saw was the loop back to uh, switch one right here, switch one. But now it's, it will be able to see the routes to the other routers that includes the R7 and R8. And when you look at the AS path, you will see that there are two instances of AS number 100. And that's because the original AS, which was the originator 65124, has been replaced by the AS number 100. So as far as the R6 router is concerned, it thinks that the routes itself has been originated from the AS100, but in fact, it's actually originated from the 65124. Okay, and that's exactly what the AS override feature does. And let's go and verify the R7 as well. So show IP BGP here. R7 can see routes to R6 and R8. And finally, R8, show IP BGP. We can see R8 can see the routes to the other CE devices located at the other sites as well. Okay, so at this point, let's check the connectivity. So we can try to ping our 866.01. Sourcing loop back 10. See this pingable. 77. That's also pingable. We already tested the connectivity to switch one. Okay, let's check our 6 as well. So our 6 check the ping to our 7. Okay, and that is also pingable.
Okay, so at this point we have a complete reachability among these four sites. Okay, this is what most likely what happened when you get the MPLS VPN service from your service provider and they give you an option to whether to use a unique AS number or a same AS number across all of your remote sites. And if you happen to use the same AS number all the way across, then this is the feature that the, the provider will have to configure for you and to allow you to accept the routes from the remote sites. And this should complete our task number two.